And remember the way we got into this long shaggy dog story um, um, is to ask what these long range connections, what role they might play in development. Remember that I said last time that most of the long range connections of the brain are present at birth. So that suggests that maybe these, these connections are also there at birth, okay? So, and it suggests that maybe indeed those connections could play a role in development. At least they're probably there. They're in a position to play that role um, if that's actually what happens. So all of this brings us to the case of rewired ferrets. Okay, what? What am I talking about? They're cute, aren't they? Uh, they're also very good experimental animals to address just this question. And Morgan Kassur in this department did this very important um, paper a while back where he asked um, whether connectivity instructs functional development. That is, whether the connectivity present at birth uh, is sufficient to determine the function of the region that has those connections. And he did this by manipulating connectivity. Okay, so if you want to ask, what is the causal role of X? You have to manipulate X, right? So we've talked a lot about this in this class. Functional MRI, wonderful, you see activity, you have no idea what its causal role is until you mess with it. For example, like by electrically stimulating the brain. Similarly, connectivity may be present at birth and may predict where the, um, we may be able to use it to predict where the functions land. It doesn't tell us that it's playing a causal role. The way to find out if it's playing a causal role is to change it and see what happens. And that's what Morgan Kasser and his colleagues did. So they used ferrets because they're born very prematurely. And so um, what that means is that you can operate on them surgically right at birth um, before they have any visual experience. They haven't opened their eyes yet. And you can, turns out, reroute some of the connectivity. Okay, so this is a diagram of some bits that should be familiar. The retina going to the lateral geniculate nucleus and then up to V1 also true in ferrets, okay? In addition, we have primary auditory cortex that we'll talk more about in a few weeks, okay? So just like V1, but for hearing, right, A1. A1 also goes to another nucleus in the thalamus, this one called the medial geniculate nucleus, and then it goes from there up through a complicated chain eventually, oh, sorry, it goes this way, <laughs> thalamus up to A1. Okay, um, so that's the basic wiring uh, of an of a adult ferret. And so what Sir and his colleagues uh, figured out how to do is redirect some of those connections by surgery at birth. So this is a wiring diagram of the same thing shown here. Retina, LGN, uh, this is V1, is also called 17. And here is medial geniculate and auditory cortex. And so what they did was to um, surgically knock out um, uh, a, a few of these connections here, okay? In, in the just born ferret pups. And what happens is if you knock out this connection here, the fibers that start this way get rerouted and you end up with a ferret that's wired up like this. The important part of this is this rewired ferret has a connection between their retina and medial geniculate nucleus that goes to primary auditory cortex. So we're taking visual input at the periphery and wiring it up into the auditory system. And the point of all of this is now primary auditory cortex in this developing ferret will be getting visual input. And so if the input were sufficient to determine the function of that region of cortex, then what should we find in these rewired ferrets? What should happen in primary, what would have been primary auditory cortex? What should it do? Yeah, it should behave like visual cortex, absolutely. If everything's determined by the inputs, we change the inputs, it should behave like visual cortex. Well, that would be freaking crazy, wouldn't it? I mean, it's miles away in the brain. It's a totally different part of brain. That would be, that would be nuts. But that's what happens. It's pretty amazing. This is a really important study. Okay. All right. Um, so... Uh, what you find, first of all, is that primary auditory cortex in the rewired ferrets responds to visual input. Okay, that's cool. But you might say, okay, you, you wired visual input in there, of course, it's going to respond to visual input. So maybe that's not too it's cool, but not too surprising. But the next part is really cool and really surprising. Remember how I said that in normal 
um, visual cortex in humans and monkeys and also ferrets, you get these orientation columns. Now remember these are, what this shows is that as you move across the cortex in V1, we're now talking visual cortex here, in visual cortex in normal mammals, you get this pro smooth progression of orientation selectivity as you move across the cortex and that's what's shown here. Everybody with the program? Okay. So that's normal primary visual cortex in an adult animal. What do you think primary auditory cortex looks like in the rewired ferrets? Damn similar. So not only do you get visual responses in what would have been auditory cortex when you rewire it, you get orientation columns. You get this really fine-grained structure of what everybody thought this was something about visual cortex. Well, this says that visual input is sufficient to produce orientation columns in a part of cortex that otherwise never would have had them. Does everybody see how mind-blowing this is? Okay, so that's pretty cool. But now we get to the really cool question. When these neurons are active, does the ferret see or do they hear? Okay, it's rewired. It's getting input from the retina, but there's neurons in what would have been uh, primary auditory cortex now responding to visual input. What does the ferret think is going on? Does he say, oh, that's sight, because he's learned that visual input means that's sight? Or does he say, I hear something, because that's auditory cortex, right? Everybody in the grip of what a cool question that is? Okay, and so it could go either way. There's no, really no way to tell in advance. It depends on how, how you read out the information in that piece of cortex. When we do MVPA, we sit you know, godlike by and we look at a patch of brain and we decode what's in there. But really what's happening in the brain is some other part of the brain is getting input and decoding and interpreting it. And so the question is, what do later parts of the brain make of this? And the answer is the later parts of the brain learn that that's visual information and the ferret reports seeing stuff, not hearing it. Now you may be thinking, how the hell do you ask a ferret if he's seeing or hearing? Uh, what you do is you use non-rewired parts of the same ferret's brain. I actually forget if it's the other hemisphere or a different part of the visual field that doesn't get rewired. But so you have gold standard where normal vision is working and normal hearing is working in the ferret and you train him, press this button when you see and press this button when you hear and it's unambiguous. And then once he's trained, you stimulate those A1 neurons and you ask him what, what's going on and he says he sees something, okay? All right, so this is one of the true classics. Um, okay, so um, this means that A1, in this case, primary auditory cortex is instructed by its connectivity and by the experience um, that comes through that connectivity to shape its function. Everybody get that? All right. So both experience and connectivity can, de can determine cortical function, at least in ferrets. 